I'm going to start things off by demonstrating its long range capabilities on these frozen watermelons. Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plink. And before we get into today's video, I want to show you guys something pretty cool behind me here. You may have seen it on Instagram already, but I had to show it on the channel. This is my new Hold Up Displays gun wall. So Hold Up Displays actually helped me put this together, so I'm super appreciative of that. Had to get it some screen time. Okay, Tucker, you know what? Fine, you can have your tennis ball. Holy moly. Sorry about that. So Hold Up Displays helped me put this gun wall together here, um, and I'm super appreciative of that. In fact, a couple years ago, they sponsored a video and sent me this six rifle rack here, as well as a couple pistol holders here. So it's not just gun walls, just a bunch of like mounting and just overall gun display solutions. Um, and that's pretty darn sweet. So this right here is one slat then two slat. Six of those makes up one traditional wall. I did six of those to fill up this thing. But if you want, you can just get three of these to kind of put something behind your office. Over this way is the office. Don't mind the desk, don't mind the curtains. I just moved here, don't judge me. But this is three of those panels. And that's just about perfect for displaying one gun and a pistol or just a ton of pistols. Again, I dig them, link down below. But without any further ado, let's get on to today's video. Wait for it. <laughs> if you recognize that sound, you would recognize the gun. This is of course the legendary M1 Garand between the United States use of, uh, of it in World War II. In fact, General S. Patton said it was the greatest battle implement of all time. So it's pretty darn special. And all these years later, we still have, I would say not the same rifle of, of course, but an iteration of that legendary action. Of course, this rifle later evolved. And that evolution ultimately brought out the M14, being chambered in 30-06 to now 308, taking an eight round clip that made a pretty legendary sound when you ran dry. It's now a 20 round box magazine. Uh, easier reloads um, and less frequently because it holds 20, among many other things, but of course we won't get too far into it because this video is about neither of these. Springfield Armory relatively recently came out with another M1A chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Some people might see this rifle as sacrilege. It shouldn't be chambered in that hipster cartridge. Well, here's the thing though. I think people are afraid to accept this rifle because it they think it means signing the petition of killing the 308. The 308 is far from dead. It won't be dead. It's an amazing cartridge still. And in fact, if I can only have one M1A, it'd be in 308. But just to see if something like this can carry on and extend the life of such a legendary action that dates back to the M1 Garand, I think that is what makes this gun pretty cool. I'm gonna start things off by demonstrating its long range capabilities on these frozen watermelons. Nice. Scott from Kentucky Ballistics, you may have watermelon time, but I've got tannerite time. It's pretty cold out today, so it's just kind of ice skating. We got about half an inch of ice. It's not too bad, it's already cracking. So uh, let's go ahead and pound it with the 6.5 and uh, let's see what happens to the ice. Try to melt a little bit of that ice. Nice. All right, so I got the biggest chunks of frozen watermelon and uh, just place them on top of here. We're gonna try to go ahead and hit these from 300 yards as well as, and actually froze these to where they're not swinging. Let's see if 300 yards of some 6.5 could fix that up. All right, unfortunately I had to remove the Stetson to look through the scope. Now that we're shooting a little bit of range, I should probably tell you guys I got a BNT Atlas bipod up front and then a Vortex uh, Viper PSD Gen 2, five to 25 by 50 up top. I saw a lot of ice chip off that thing. All right, let's go for the watermelon chunk on the top. Did it go right through it or what? There we go. Okay, I got a hold now. Now it's rocking. Get that ice off there. Ah, oh, I'd have missed that last one. At 455 yards, couldn't tell, it's pretty cold out, so it's all icy. Hopefully when I miss, I could see where it lands, but it might be a little tricky. Let's see what happens. I saw like a, uh, might've been low or something, cause I saw, it might've hit the wood. I saw like shake. I'm gonna go top edge. 
Might have grouped it with the uh, Desert Tech's grouping. Uh, two videos back, I shot that six round group with the Desert Tech. I think I just kind of stacked it within that vicinity. So it is a little low. I'm gonna go a bit higher. Now I'm gonna try going dead center. Nice. It counts. All right, I'm gonna go left edge. What? All right, maybe I should stop going left edge. I actually have a little bit of shooting left from December. I shot, I zeroed it in very, very quickly. I was limited time, but I was in Crescent, Texas before they closed down their long, long range section. And what's really long range for this gun, in my opinion, is about a thousand yards. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of analytical stuff. I just have like a really quick string of fire. So I'll show you that real quickly. Low left. So there it is, not a whole lot of shooting from a thousand, but it had pretty good success at hitting a thousand. Uh, but to be honest, it was a pretty big target. I think it was two MOA, but hey, for an M1A at hitting a thousand, it's pretty fun for an auto loader. So anyway, I'm sure it could stretch further. And plus none of this from that video or this video was match ammunition. Ammunition is so scarce right now, as I already said. So once I have some more 6.5, uh, you guys can bet I'm gonna show off some more uh, blasting away with this rifle, cause it's pretty fun. But to summarize my thoughts on it, where I'm left thinking with a 6.5 Creedmoor M1A. As I said earlier, if I could only have one M1A, it would be probably a national match, like I showed you earlier, in 308. But because I have the luxury of shooting multiple guns and you know, for work, making content, uh, I'm glad I get to get my hands on this. And how do I see this fitting in the collection? Very well. Uh, something about a really low recoil impulse on a platform I know very well on a chambering that I have a lot of other rifles for, it's pretty cool. If you're a reloader, then great. If you want to try to find match ammunition, which I haven't done yet, to see how good it can shoot, then fantastic. Again, when I find ammo, I will be a little bit more analytical and kind of group it and see how it does, and we'll do some more shooting because I know this was a little limited, and I apologize for that. Just the times we're in kind of sucks. But I see a 6.5 Creedmoor M1A the same way I see a 10 millimeter or a 9 millimeter 1911. Some people just will not accept it, and that's a little sad because they're really, really cool shooters, both a 6.5 M1A and a different chambering 1911. The way I see it is you have something that's quite a legend, whether you're thinking about how it stems from the M14 or how it stems from the M1 Garand. That's why I really wanted to bring out the M1 Garand earlier this video. And when you have a chambering like a 6.5 Creedmoor, that hipster cartridge, it extends the life, whether you like it or not, or whether you realize it or not, it extends the excitement and the life of a legend. The same way, honestly, a 1911 is a bit obsolete to modern guns with modern capacity, but when we still get a 9mm 1911, they're actually really, really great guns to shoot recreationally, and if you find a work use for it, then fantastic. So that's kind of where I'm left with this. You may not like a different chambering M1A, but to me, it's how it shows that legends never die. So that does it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Whoa, I'm freaking cold.